Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video and it's time for the weekly challenges guide where I'm going to show you how can you earn 123 atoms as well as the legendary weapon Night Light. <laughs> A new week and more challenges to complete. For this one, I'm going to show you guys how to do four weekly challenges and earn up to 123 atoms. I'm going to exclude one of the five. However, it is the hunter hunted one as usual because it is a true hassle to do for several reasons. First, nobody really queues up for it. It's very difficult to find a match. Secondly, it bugs very easily. And thirdly, you need to actually win for it to count and win with certain costumes. You need to choose at least five costumes from the list they give you. So it is rather challenging and difficult to do it. And I will not be doing this one. So let's start with the easiest one, claiming the workshop. <laughs> the easiest atoms of the week is usually here with the workshop this time is the sunshine meadows industrial farm at the very east of the map at the starting zone and you can't really fast travel there so you have to go to a nearby location which is not so far off then you have to run there i know it is a little bit bothersome but a it's not the end of the world and you should clear whatever is around the workshop in my case there was no enemies so I just paid some caps to claim the workshop, but then there was no progress bar. I even tried to claim it again. And as you can see, it's clearly bugged, but it's like a stealthy bar. It was claiming, even though it didn't show me. In the end, everything was fine. I claimed the workshop, I got my free atoms, and that's what it matters. So if this happens to you, don't worry. It's probably just a little bit bugged on the display part. Well, for this week, we also have to take camera pictures of different types of critters. It is a quite common weekly challenge and this time I decided I wanted to do it in one go. As usual, I start here at the overseas camp. If you have watched some of my other weekly challenge guides, I usually recommend this particular location because it can spawn about everything if you server jump. But in this case, some other player had already killed some chickens and a rat stag. However, you can still take pictures of dead bodies and it will count. That's not a problem. Then I went ahead towards Flatwoods, where you can usually find some dogs and rat stags along the way, either in the road or in the forest, as well as some opossums sometimes. And there it is, one of them at least. And the dogs are just running across the road. Yes, mongrels count as dogs, in case you don't know. And we already have four. So moving on towards the city still, there are some rat stacks, as you can see. It's a fixed spot for them. We don't need rats, but there is also an opossum here at the reception, in case you didn't find one before. Moving on, we will find a pack of Brahmins. Three here and three past the church. So if you don't find them here, you can just move a little bit forward and you will probably find them because there are two different spots here. It is very handy, especially when you need some Brahmin milk or to take a picture. You have six to choose from. Next, I went to Vault 76 because around it, it is something like the Overseer's Camp, that location I showed you before, just past the bridge. It can spawn about everything here, from fireflies to squirrels to rabbits to cats. So I got a firefly, as you can see. Then I moved a little bit around while spamming my VATS key. It helps a lot to find them. And there is a dog, I already had it. And then I found these two cats right here. And that's exactly what I wanted. 
With 7 critters already, I noticed I didn't have a squirrel or a rabbit, so I went to the wet spring service entrance because this is a fixed spot for both of them, or at least rabbits. I was lucky enough to find them two together, I didn't even notice at first, but if you don't find a squirrel here, you can just go a little bit back following these buildings at the wet spring, around there, and that's a fixed spot for squirrels as well, at least one to two are there, unless they are on spawn. For the last creature, I went to the White Spring Golf Club because it is very close and I basically needed something that is here, a frog. They were kinda dead, I mean very dead, someone else got to them before me. I mean, I wouldn't kill them, you know, but yeah, you can just take a photograph and it does count. And that's how I found different critters in one single server. I hope you enjoy and learn something new. Now it's time to do the easiest weekly challenge after the workshop. For 23 atoms, we need to take pictures of different types of robots. They have decreased it, usually it was 10, now it's 8. So go ahead to the White Spring Resort. If you are there from the last challenge, then don't leave. Just take pictures of all the different robots here, starting by the Sentry Bot and the Protectron. Then you can go to the Mr. Gardener. Yes, it does count as a Mr. Gutsy or Handy. Then you can also take a picture of an Assaultron, there are plenty at the entrances, they are like patrolling the area. And in here you can find two of them, for example. And then it's time to move. For the iBot, I usually go to Watauga, but it is kind of far away, so I went here to this 98 NAR location, where it seems to be a fixed location for an iBot. I actually tried three times and I always found the iBot here, so I think, not 100% sure, but I think this is a fake spawn, so you can head here. It is much cheaper than going to a togger from White Spring. Hmm, what about a robo brain? Well, just head to the big old statue parlor and you will meet Biv. If you haven't met him yet, he is the drinking guy who can give you daily missions for drinking recipes and taking a picture of him will count as a robo brain. He's always here, so it is more than a fixed spot, or don't you think so? The best place in the game to find liberators is here at Vault 76. Why? Because it is free. You can come here at no cost and they are so close to the vault. It's literally two seconds from it and that's it lots of liberators a picture and let's move on for the last one the turret i usually take a picture of one of my turrets in my camp but for those without a turret you can come here to this relay tower and you will usually find turrets in the walls in this case they were down someone killed them but their body or remains on the floor still count if you take a picture. So one way or the other, you can come here and get your terrific picture to finish your weekly challenge and earn these 20 free atoms. As number four and for 30 free atoms, we have the complete 10 events for the week. I mean, it is really not difficult, actually, if you play every day and you do events, this is super, super easy. But it takes some time if you are trying to rush it in one single day, like I did. Actually, I had done two queens before this one. I was not recording. And that's why I started with two events done and I'm not showing you guys, because I don't have it. Anyway, if you are trying to rush it for whatever reason, my best suggestion is to head to workshops. For example, here I just helped this guy defending his workshop. I joined late, so it was like an event done in one minute, super, super fast. 
Low-level events are also very easy and are really quick to do, like leader of the pack. Actually, you can get a few low-level legendaries from this event, and it pops up quite often, at least for me. This means you can use it for the weekly challenge as well as for some script. Or if you like to do charity, you can just go ahead, find some low levels and gift it to them. I mean, why not? Maybe you can make someone's day a better day. Otherwise, just script whatever you get. Normally it's weapons and they are always one star. So keep that in mind. Swarm of Sweeters is another great example because the event goes by really, really quickly. You only have to find these murlurks that get stuck in the rocks, in the houses, in the bridges. They get stuck everywhere, but if you manage to find them and kill them quickly, the event goes by under 5 minutes. So, here's another option for your list. But again, I think that defending workshops is the easiest and quickest way to do this challenge. Of course, you won't always find these events up, especially if no one is really going for workshops. But remember, you can claim them yourself and then defend them. Because as soon as you claim a workshop, after like five minutes or less, you get a defend event. So another tip for you there. Moving on, if you are actually in a hurry, just go for whatever events you find. If you hate server jumping, then you won't have much of an option because events don't always spawn in mass. So for example, here I went for a line in the sand. I don't really recommend if you are trying to do events that are quick and easy because this one takes a while and you have to kill Scorch Beast. If you are doing this solo, it can be a bit bothersome. But A, if you have nothing else to do, just go for it, I would say. And hard events is probably the best solution after workshops that, if you are able to find the horde itself, I normally have issues of finding them. I go north, south, east, west, I run in circles and I usually don't find them, but in this case it was inside West Tech and it was very easy to spot the horde and the boss itself. So as soon as you kill the boss, the event will conclude and you will get the fastest event completion in history of Fallout 76. But again, this is Wally. Fair and square, if you are able to find the horde. If not, I wouldn't really bother, it's just tricky most of the times. I finished off this weekly challenge with a free range event because, well, you kind of get a legendary, but in this case I was really late, so I got an event completion in literally five seconds i fast traveled and the event was done all right don't mind if i do so that's how i completed this weekly and the last one was a great surprise i hope you get tons of them it will make your life much easier now it's time for me to let you see the light in survival mode how can you get your nightlight legendary weapon and what I have to do four things, and they are all pretty simple. Well, apart from one, which took me forever because I was uh, quite unlucky. But other than that, uh, let's start with killing an enemy with an energy weapon. So let me inform you that mines don't work. I tried a plasma mine here. As you can see, the scorch died and it didn't count. I'm not entirely sure if it's a bug or if a plasma energy mine doesn't really work. Anyway, I used my plasma weapon to kill a random fox. I'm sorry, poor foxy. But yeah, I think that's the best way to do this one. If you don't have an energy weapon, I suggest you to kill super mutants anywhere in the world. For example, at West Tech, at Yards, you can find several super mutants that will drop a uh, charging laser sniper rifle because it's the weapon they are using. Just kill them and I'm sure you're going to find a laser weapon in one of the corpses. 
Next, next, I went for the building a light in my camp and surprisingly, not all lights seem to work. Just like this one. I guess it's another bug or feature. I decided then to build a simple light, the basic of the basic. This one, yes. And it worked, so there you go. Don't go for complex lights, it probably won't work. Alright, now it's time for me to share my pain. I tried to find the firefly, for example here at Vault 76. If you watched the video so far, you know that in here around Vault 76, it's a spawn for critters and there is a huge chance for fireflies to spawn. However, I didn't find any here. Also at the isolated cabin, it is a great chance for fireflies. I'm going to show you several spots. They're not fixed. They are dynamic spots for fireflies. Why? Because normally there is one to two servers in survival which makes server jumping impossible. So I basically went over the entire server on all the firefly spots that I know. And guys, I didn't find a firefly. Nope. It took me over an hour to actually find the event. Thankfully, I tried to server jump. I always ended up in the server. And yeah, it was disgraceful. I was in pure despair. I checked every single freaking spawn for a firefly and i couldn't find any so then the path of enlightenment came to literally enlight my challenge and i just killed one firefly and got the hell out of there and i was so relieved after this finally i had to find a storm and i suggest you to head to really high places to search for clouds. Here at the lighthouse is a fine example where you have a great view and can see ahead. About any watchtower is also a fine example because you have altitude and you are able to see a lot in the distance. I had some trouble finding a storm, again because I was always in the same server and I don't really think there was a storm anywhere in the server. First, because I couldn't find any clouds at all, only some mist. But then when I got there, I had these clouds in the sky. I even tried to take a picture to see if it counted and it doesn't. It needs to be raining for the game to count it as a storm. Fallout 76 things. But then a light called Alfi came on Discord and he actually found a raining storm in another survival mode server. So all I had to do was joining him, take a picture, and it was done. Thank you, Amphi, very much for saving the day for me. It took me a while to find a storm, and I know that normally around this area, around Purvior, the legendary vendor, it rains a lot because my base is right here, and it does rain often. However, on that server, day and night, it didn't rain for some strange reason. And here we are, night light is like a Tesla rifle, 3 stars with 1 perception, 25% faster fire rate and some more damage during the night. It is nothing that special, but if you like to play during the night, then this might be a weapon just for you, especially if you enjoy energy damage. <laughs> I know that last week I did a small test with a weekly weapon, but for this one, first, I don't really have rifle perks or perception whatsoever or energy build perks, so I don't think it's suitable for me to do a damage test for this weapon, but I believe it is useful for some people out there with the right builds. However, for me, it is rather useless and I'm putting it in my vendor might as well scrape it later hmm who knows anyway that's going to be everything for this video i hope the information here has helped you achieve the 123 items for this week as well as the legendary weapon that you can use or sell for profit or for script 
I'm Marta Branco. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And don't forget to subscribe if you are new around and if you enjoyed what you just saw. Moreover, I have a Patreon page if you would like to support me even further. The link is in the description below as usual. And that's going to be everything. Thank you again, guys. I will see you very, very soon. Adios. Bye-bye.